In this tutorial, we'll demonstrate how to make elevators. Here we have a room with a sidewalk platform mounted to a wall some distance up from the floor. We'll add two simple elevators to opposite sides of our platform. One will carry the player up to the platform, and the other will carry the player down to the floor. We'll first make the elevator that goes up. This kind of elevator is actually an applied entity called Funk Platform. We start by adding a brush into our map for the elevator platform. and place it at the top position where the elevator can rise up to in the map. We then apply the Funk Platform Entity to it. We right click, go to Apply Entity, go to Funk, and select Platform. We need to modify some properties for our elevator. We can change the speed the elevator will move, and the sound it will make. The height value specifies the distance between the top and the bottom positions of our elevator. To get this value, we move our mouse into the back window and place it over the top and the bottom positions of our elevator in the map and calculate the differences between the Z values of the two coordinates. We type the result of 110 into the height field. By default, the elevator platform will start out at the bottom position in Quake. When a player steps onto the platform, it will carry the player up to the top position. And when the player steps off the elevator platform, it will drop itself down to the bottom position. We can control the elevator manually by using other trigger entities. To do this, we would need to assign an identifying name for this elevator in the target name field. We will demonstrate this in the next tutorial. Now we'll make the second elevator that goes down. We will use the entity Funk Door to do this. We add a new brush for the second elevator and place it again at the top position. We apply to it the entity Funk Door. For the angle field, we need to type in the value negative 2 so that it will move downward. We also need to specify a height value for our elevator through the lip attribute. To get the new lip value, we briefly estimate the thickness of our platform, which is 8 in this case, and subtract the height value of 110 from it. We then enter the result of negative 102 in the lip field. Since we used a door to simulate an elevator, and that doors have a much wider trigger area by default, the door will start to move down even before the player can step on it. We will manually add a trigger entity to better emulate the behavior of an elevator. We first assign an identifying name for our second elevator in the target name field. Then we add a small trigger brush on the top of our elevator and point its target to our second elevator. Here we use the entity Trigger Multiple, which works very similar to the Trigger Once entity except it can trigger its target multiple times. Now our elevator will start to move down only when the player walks into the trigger brush.